Another podcast, baby. You are now listening to the weight room. You know how we do it. You know how we get down, baby. You know how we do it. You know how we get down, church. The first part sounded too sexy, so I had to change it up and make sure we we know what this is about Jesus. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Got an interesting show for you guys today. Um you know how I do the show. You guys know the format. Yeah, we're going to keep to it. We're going to keep to it. But today we're going to be talking about men and women and maybe relationships if we get that far. But the first um, topic I'm going to be speaking to men. Second topic I'm going to be speaking to women. Um, Don't get it twisted. If I'm talking to men, women, I don't want to hear you say anything. So um, before we get into it, we want to get into a quick prayer. You know how we get things started. So if you don't mind, I just want to go ahead and start the prayer. Father God, we like to thank you today for bringing us together and bringing us here. We may not all be together at one time, but we are together in, in, in spirit and in truth. And listen to your wisdom, Father God, asking you for your wisdom, listening to your wisdom. Father God, we thank you for all things, but most importantly, Father God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our Savior. We thank you for the Holy One that you've given us. The, the, the ones that do not deserve him, Father God, you gave him to us. We want to thank you for giving him to us. We want to thank you for Jesus. Jesus, we want to thank you for all you have done, all you are going to do. Thank you for getting us back to our Father, our Holy Father. Father, we also want to thank you for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, coming to us right now. Let me say the thing that you want them to hear. Let them hear the thing that you want they want me to say. We come to you, Holy Spirit, because the word says you know all things and all things you will bring to our remembrance. We ask you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, to be with us, to grow with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the word. I, I tell you, I love this part of the show because, you know, we need the word. We need the word of God. <clears throat> this is going to be Psalms 100. Psalms 100. <clears throat> uh, Psalms. <laughs> if you need more help, it's Psalms. But the 100th Psalms. Psalms 100. And we're going to come at one and we're going to go down a little bit. Maybe around to about... Well, we're going to just do the whole Psalms because I think this is beautiful. And it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve, Lord, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and his sheep of the pastures. pastors. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is God and his mercy in, is in, in lasting and his truth endureth all generations, all generations, all generations. Just understand, you know, this is the week before Thanksgiving. This is the week that we come together. If some of you that believe in it, you come together and you want to bring your families together and be thankful and everything. And, 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 and what better way to do it than to being joyful, giving praise unto God. Now it's a lot of you know it's a lot of, it's a lot of mixed emotions about the holiday Thanksgiving. Some say, you know, it was a, a pagan holiday because of the origin. Some say the origins was evil that makes the holiday evil, and the origins was evil, right? But the idea could be 
amazing, right? Just taking a day out to be thankful. In a lot of ways, in the time that we're living in the day, I think that's is this is more important than anything. See, see, we're living in a day where you don't know, <laughs> like more than ever, you don't know if you're gonna make it to tomorrow. I woke up this morning and um, there was 15 people killed and a bunch of people shot at it at it at it. I guess a gay club or gay thing. Those people didn't think they was gonna be dying last night. We're having a lot of different things going on there. There's a, there's a snowstorm out in the Northwest that put a bunch of snow in, and, and, and we don't know if people died in it, but it's, it's very dangerous. We had hurricanes. We have all these different humanities and that's natural. These are natural things that happen. And, and well, actually the, the gun violence and shooting, killing people, it's not natural. But what I'm saying is naturally life is not gonna be given to us forever naturally no one is gonna live more than 150 years <laughs> so coming together and being thankful just for life alone is is, is very important then you want to talk about those who are living in extremely and then being extreme blessed to me if you just breathe today you got an opportunity that's being blessed right right um, let, 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 let me break it down because I want to intertwine this with, 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 with being thankful in, 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 the, in, in the holiday of Thanksgiving. Whether you serve it or not, I think this is a good practice to have. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Oh my goodness. I love this. I love this. I love this. See, see. We forgot when we serving God, we're not serving a regular God, right? We're not serving the God that the, 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 the they serve over here or that. No, we serving the God, right? Like you guys don't understand. We got God, right? It's like, it's like, it's like unbelief. So y'all get joyful. It's like seeing your favorite pop star or your favorite superstar. But Times that a thousand, a times a million. For me, like I'm serving that God. Like I get to, I get to sing a song to Him, right? I get, I get to be. It's like a, just like I can't explain it. But this the God I serve. This I serve a God. I can't believe it. I don't know about y'all, but I cannot believe I get a chance to serve God. Like do y'all know what that mean? I mean, it's like okay. So the 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 the, the, the um lottery was at. A billion dollars, right? Um, over a billion dollars about two weeks ago, a week ago, or whatever, how long ago that was. Imagine you hitting that lottery, right? Imagine the excitement, the joyful, the, 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 the life changing that is. For me, God is 10 times, 20 times, 30 times more than that. I serve God. See, that's the, that's, that's the problem we have. That's the problem I have with this new, this new way of faith in Christianity or in Christ. Like, 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 like y'all don't know the joyfulness you have or you should have because of we serve God. I don't care if he'll do another thing for me. I serve God. It's easy for me to sing a new song to him. Right? It's easy for me to sing songs to him. Because I know who he is. He's wonderful. He's majestic. He's all, I don't got the words. I don't have the words. We don't have the words. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence singing. Singing. Right? Imagine just, just, our God is awesome. He can move a mountain. Our God is mighty to say, like, 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 we come before him singing these type of songs because we know who he is. Sadly, the gospel music has become about us and not about him, so we don't understand this. Right? It, it, the, the new songs are Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. It, it, it becomes about us. But I'm talking because of who you 
why I give you my uh, uh, you are worthy. Whatever the song goes. See, we come before him with that heart singing, Father God, you're good. You're awesome. We come before him with that heart. We don't come before him as, oh, he might be awesome. Oh, he might be good. No, we come before him. We know who you are. We know who you are. He says, know ye that the Lord is God? It is he that hath made us and not ourselves. We are his people and his sheep of his pastures. We belong to him. He made us. He formed us. He put him inside of us. Do you know what that means? Like, you know what that means? Like, he put, he put him in me. Like, 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 I am not an accident. My mama, not, my mama and daddy may not meant to have me. Your mama and daddy may not even know you. She was pregnant with you. I did was pregnant. They may thought that this was just a fling. Not God. Not God. Not God said, God said, okay, I'm going to take that worst situation and I'm going to put you in it. Ooh, that's him. See, we get caught. I'm, I'm getting so emotional. I'm sorry. But we get caught up in these earthly things. Oh, you you came from this. You, I don't care where I came from. Well, matter of fact, let me change that. You came through this. I don't care what I came through. I know who I came from. See, my situation does not, does not overpower God's goodness, God's mercy of who he is. So, so, so your backstory don't mean a thing to me. I don't care about your backstory. I know who you came from. I know who you came from. Y'all better know. The, the word says that that, 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 that that we we didn't make it. He had made us, not us, not we ourselves. We didn't make ourselves, cause if we ain't made ourselves, we put ourselves in a situation that we don't need to be in. See, if we made ourselves, you'll make yourself up on that house in that hill. So you'll be born through that to that most powerful woman, earthly, right? The, the the woman with the most money and the and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the father with the most money and, and, and the most power and everything and, and, and you'll come out and, and, and be just as weak as you want to be and you will need God, you'll believe you will need God and you wouldn't have God. And but see, see, see God said, I'm, I'm gonna put, bring you through through the worst situations, right? Your mama gonna be a crack whore and she don't know who your father is. Your father gonna be a crackhead and he didn't even know he was having a baby. Right? Your parents are so poor that all they do is work. See, that, that's who God is bringing you through. Don't, don't look at America and don't look at the Western world and see that, oh, these people are being brought through through the best situations, but we are bringing some of the worst people in through these best situations. But God say, let me create you. I don't care the decisions of your mother. I don't care the decisions of your father. Your father could be the biggest, the, the, the strongest, and the richest. And God said, you know what? I'm going to bring you through him, but you won't have his story. You're going to have a more powerful story. You grow up everything. You have everything you want when you grow up. You have everything you need when you grow up. But God said, no, 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 no. I brought you through. I, I brought you. I allowed you to come through that. But that's not that's not what I want for you, right? Next thing you know, your power, your, your, you, 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 you leave your, your parents' home and you go through all these struggles. And, but God said, this is because I created you. I created you. And when God creates you, understand this. He can bring you through something or some people. He can bring you through a family situation that can be the worst or the best. But he's going to form you the way he wants you to be. See, 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 when I was formed, it was the guy that formed me saying, okay, I'm forming DeLacy and I'm going to put him in this situation right here. No, God said, I'm forming DeLacy because he's going to be a beast because he's going to worship me. And through his worship for me, I'm going to make him a mighty man. Or... I'm going to form him and through his care what situation he come through, I'm going to make him the most meekest man out there. I'm going to make him the most loving man out there. I'm going to make him the most knowledgeable man out there. Be thankful, right? Be thankful. This is going to go a little long. I don't care. I don't care. This might be a long podcast today. 
And it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and to his court with praises. Bruh, bruh, understand, when you're talking about this right here, we're talking about when you're going to him, right? When, when you're going to that, 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 that prayer life, when you're going into that worship life, when you're going to, even to the point of you trying to tell people about Jesus. We, 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 we enter that point, whatever that point is, you enter that point with, with, with being thankful, right? With praise, ha. Huh? See, see, we want to enter that, I, I've noticed this, we want to enter that point with knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Oh, you need to know Jesus because of this. Oh, Father God, your word said, no, 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 no. Just going with being thankful, going with praise, going, Father, you are good. I thank you for everything. I thank you for everything, and I thank you for nothing. I thank you if I ain't got a dime. I thank you if I got too much. I thank you if I ain't got enough, right? Because you are God. Because you are God. I'm getting animated, but that's how I get when I talk about my father. This is my holy father. Y'all don't know, this is my holy father. We talking about my holy father. You talking about the holiest one of all. Of course I'm gonna get animated and of course I'm gonna get Ooh, Lord, thank you. Let me let me let me ooh. Thank you, Father. See, see, we forgot who he is or something. Right? We forgot his 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 power, his mercifulness, his his strength, and, and we made it about us. Oh Father, it's me. It's me again. Me, 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 me. No, 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 Father, it's you. It's you. We ain't the same. I'm sorry, me and you are not the same. If you're going through them because of what you want, we're not the same. I was talking to a lady, and um, she's a good friend of mine, and she was like, how can I pray for you? And I, and I told her, you know, just pray my strength in him. I ain't finna tell you, I don't want nothing. I don't want, I don't have to want nothing because he's my father. He knows what I want. Just like, you know what your kids need, and you know what your kids want. You're going to work hard as you can to supply their need, but you'll work a little hard, not, not hard as you can for their need, but you'll work a little hard for they want. If your child don't need a pair of shoes, but he want a pair of shoes, you say, well, you know, I might pick up one shift, one extra shift to, 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 to please my child on that. But when your kids need something, You'll work a thousand extra shifts if you got to. My father is better than that. Our holy father is better than better than that. He's more powerful than that. He's more loving than that. Don't you forget it. Don't you ever forget it. I dare you. I dare you. I tell you, I don't need nothing. You don't have to pray for me. You don't got to pray for me for things. You pray my strength in him. You pray my strength in him. You pray that I, I, I never forget this mind of who he is. That's what you pray. You pray that he keeps me. But even then, now, I don't really care if you pray for that or you don't because you said the bird of God said, who can take him out of his hand? Who can snatch me out of his hand? I can't even snatch myself out of his hand. I can't even snatch myself out of his hand. So how you, you think I'm worried about somebody else snatching me out of his hand? Or oh, the devil or whatever? I don't care nothing about that. I don't care about that. My goodness, my goodness, y'all got me riled up, man. Let me go ahead and end this, because we got another. <laughs> this could be a sermon, but I, I'm going to go ahead and just, 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 just try to end it with this right here. I'm going to try to end it. It says, for the Lord is God, his mercy everlasting, and his truth endures all generations. The truth of God is going to go through all generations. That's the most beautiful thing about it. Yes, his mercy. It, like, like, I love his mercy. Oh, my goodness, his mercy, but his truth. The truth, who he is, his word. This is going to go on forever. Yo, people be like, man, how could you believe in that Bible, man? How could you believe that that, that man wrote that Bible? This, that, this? I don't care nothing about that. I don't care nothing about that. His truth is going to endure forever. The truth is going to endure forever. That means if I'm not on this earth tomorrow, his truth is. If I'm not on this earth in 25 more years, his truth will be. If, if, if they figure out a way to make man live forever, which I don't think that, that, that that's going to happen, but their forever is honestly going to be, uh, if they can get 150 years, that's their forever. 
But if they find out to make a man live forever, guess what God's truth is going to be? Wrap that in his heart. Wrap that in his heart. Y'all better hit me on this. Y'all better hear me on this. So in this season, I'm going to bring it home with this. In this season of going in with the holidays and all that, and how you feel about it, that's how you feel about it, right? I don't care how you feel. you Whether you serve them or not, that's on you. I, I don't care. But remember, even past this season, remember, come to Father in, in Thanksgiving, right? And, 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 and knowing who he is, when you break bread this holiday with your family, see, because that's what's special about the holiday. We, we, more and more, we are being less and less with our family. And I'm not talking about, you know, your, your, your kids and your wife and, and, and husband and all. I'm not talking about that family. I'm talking about your cousins and your aunties and your grandmas and any of them. I'm talking about that family. When you, when you come together with them, Yo, yo, remember being thankful. Being thankful. And remember, this is the most, the hardest people to reach is your family for Jesus. Um, a lot of times because you may be living in a world where, you know, where your family don't believe in Jesus. You may be a person that, that that's a, a, a believer that is not in the line, that did not come through Parents that believe they may believe in, 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 in some other gods, you know, they believe in something else. Remember, the best thing you can do is when you enter that, that space with them, being thankful for God, thankful to God, and then, then, then worship, sing and worship Him. Let them see that. What happened if we show them us thank if we show them, if us show them that we're thankful for this powerful, amazing God that is God? Like, 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 how can our God be greater? If we're not gonna show that he's greater, that's that's a, that's an oxymoron. I can't do it. I won't do it. So let, let's go in with thankfulness and, and, and praise and worship to show that he's God. He is God. He is God. He is God. God bless you. Thank you for your word, Father God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for all that you are. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. My goodness, oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Woo! Y'all give me a second, I gotta get myself together. Y'all gotta give me a second, I gotta get myself together. Father, thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the, um, the show. Um, I kind of hate to even be going in this direction now. Um, but I want to talk to men and I want to talk to women, right? Today, I want to talk to each other because I do feel like we are the order. Men are men are out of order and women are out of order. We have so many. We have so many. Um. So many things that, that that has came against us, and we not know it, right? We can go. On, I, I've went into that into other shows. If you if you if you this is your first time hearing me, please go listen to some of the other shows. But but they have put us out of order. Media has people that 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 controls the media has put us out of order. People that control culture has put us out of order. Different agendas from people has bringing men and women out of order. Right? When I say order, I'm talking about a natural order. And a natural order is God's order. Men and then women. Right? He, he put Adam to sleep. When he seen that Adam was not complete, took a rib and completed him and made women. And made women for him. By God making women for men, he has set an order that's men over women, right? So men, I'm not here to debate the order. I don't care how you feel about it. If you believe it or not, I don't care. You stay out of order over there. That's his order. If you don't like that order, then I don't know what to tell you. 
I'm gonna tell you. What you want me to do? I'm not gonna change it. I can't change it. It's his order. And I thank him for his order. Now, men, what? it's your turn. I'm speaking to you. It's time for you to be put back in order. How we start this is this. You know you're out of order, right? The reason why you're out of order, we're gonna talk about how you're out of order. And the ways and the reason you are out of order is because somewhere down the line, in most of our lives, we have not seen a strong man in order. So we wasn't raised with that knowledge of order. That's important. We have not seen the order that we're supposed to see, so we don't know it. So the first reason why you out of order is because you're ignorant of order. You don't know what order is. Right, they told you what order is, but they never showed you what order is. See, for me, I don't care too much to teach you about with words. I'm more of teaching you with, 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 with showing you. I want to show you how to fish, right? I don't want to tell you you're supposed to put the, 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 the bait on the, on the hook and throw it in there and you just got to wait. No, 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 I'm going to show you. Look, look, you put the bait on like this right here so it'll be strong enough to stay. When it, see, that, there you go. Now, now you see that thing? I throw it in the water and now I'm watching that little cork as soon as it start bobbing or whatever, I'm going to snatch it. That's for a snatch fishes, if you know how to, you know, snatch fish, you know. But then in Ritter Rod, I'm going to hook it up and I'm going to throw it as far as I can. Then I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave a little line. And when that line tighten up, you see how the line tighten up? Now it's time to pull them in. And I got to roll them in. So it's for me, I like the, 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 I think we, we need to, to be shown, not just taught, or not just spoke to, but we got to be shown and we're not, we not shown that. So the first reason why we out of order is because we don't have that knowledge. We, was, we wasn't told how to be in order. Right, somewhere down the line, the men left home, or the men, and some men stay home and they just never, never, never picked up the responsibility of that, right? You know, it's a lot of things that happen. You know, you can say with, with the black community, the government came in and and, and they incentivize the women to be single and to be on their own by, you know, helping them and, and whatever. Or you could say in in, in, in a big culture in, in America where we had the war and men were shipped off to war and they were out fighting for the country while women were at home raising the kids, right? Or you can say uh, with the, with the um, prison industrial system that we have here, a lot of men has been put in jail and women was left alone to raise these kids. But whatever you want to blame it on, we can't not lie about the fact that the order of, 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 of men showing us what to be, what it is a man is, is not there, right? I also want to bring in the drugs and alcohol that hit most communities, that are hitting most communities. All these things are, are issues that played into why we don't have order. But listen, that's not an excuse. I, I wasn't raised with a strong man in the house. But I had to figure this out on my own. And thank God for, 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 for him because he showed me through his word. And then through, 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 through him just taking me to people that was walking in order, through men that was walking in order. He he he, he showed me by, by 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 shedding light on those that's doing it right or that, that are doing it in order. And the first thing to get in order that a man has to do is a man has to start taking accountability. Right? We gotta start taking accountability. And what that means is whatever happens in your life, you're responsible. You can blame it on people that came before. Yeah, somebody else could have did it. But you gotta go and find in your life where, okay, yeah, my father wasn't there, but did I go seek out manly, manly, um, manly men? Did I go seek out men in order? That's the first thing you gotta understand that 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 is. You gotta you gotta take responsibility and accountability. Now, once you take responsibility and accountability, then the second thing after you take responsibility and accountability is you're gonna say, okay, well then now it's my turn to go and seek out men in order. Right, go and seek out men in order. Whether it be, you know, uh, 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 um, godly men, or whether it be men who are, are are preaching order. 
you got to seek out men in order. So number one, you got to take accountability. And by taking accountability, you also got to fix that, right? Accountability is going to lead you to fix things. See, as a man, we have to be fixers of things. That's what we're called to be. And we cannot be fixers if we can't take accountability, especially in our own lives. Number two, we got to take responsibility. You got to take some responsibility in your life. Responsibility teaches you a lot more about being a man than anything out there. I always say, man, if you if you in college, man, and, and, and you don't have a second job, because that job is going to teach you a lot of responsibility. Even for kids, if your kid's 16 years old, it's not a bad thing to try to get him to be a woman. Listen to me, for men, your young men that you're raising, when they're 16 years old, it's not a bad thing to push him to go to, um, to, to get a job. And make sure when he get a job, the second part of responsibility is he, you give him some way to be with, something to be responsible for. One thing that my mom did for me is she gave me responsibility. When I got a job, she said, okay, well, this bill right here, I want you to be responsible for. When, 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 when I became responsible for that bill or those, you may say, okay, I want you to be responsible for these two bills, right? Um, for instance, you can get your kid a job and say, I want you to be responsible for entertainment, right? And what that mean is, if the internet bill is like $100 and, and maybe the Netflix bill, give him those two bills, the internet and the Netflix bills, and say, you're responsible for these two bills. Every month, these two bills have to be responsible for. If, a, if your child got a job, he should automatically be responsible for his phone bill. Automatically. Listen, women, men, when your kids get a job, teach them be, to teach them responsibility by putting them, you know, in, in charge of a bill. The phone bill don't pay for that. You should not pay for the phone bill, and that's not a bill. That's something that that's a part of his that's a part of his world. So that little 40 50 dollars. Now I'm not saying make him pay for the phone. That's fine if you want to buy him the phone or whatever. That's fine. That's perfectly fine. Cause these phones can get expensive. Let him pay for the phone, and then now he's responsible for the phone bill. But then add another bill to that. Add, add the cable, the, the, the cable bill or the internet bill. I don't know who pay for cable. So if you got a cable bill, I know when I was coming up, my mom put me responsible for the responsible for the cable bill. The cable bill was thirty five dollars. I had to pay the cable bill every month. And then I would always give my mom like you know here twenty five dollars you know just to help her out. You know, I don't know. I had a heart. My mom was a single mother, so of course. Well, she was. She wasn't single, but when by the time I got grown, her and her ex had broken up, and everything. So she, she was single at that point. My sister, she paid a bill. My my brother, I, I don't know. If my brother paid it because my brother was an athlete. He really didn't really focus on. I don't remember. You gotta talk to him. <laughs> but I was responsible for the cable bill. So now, responsibility. It's one. So number one, men, we have to take accountability. Then we got to learn responsibility. A lot of men out here are failing as men because they have no responsibilities. No responsibility. You out here raising. You out here. You out here having kids with women, but you never knowing any of the responsibility. So you don't take care of your kids because you never was taught responsibility. You never was taught accountability and responsibility. All right, number three. Now, all of this is outside of religion, by the way. All of this is outside of religion. Obviously, God being taught God is the most important thing a man can know. I mean, that's, that's obvious. I don't. I shouldn't have to say that, right? So just wait. number two. Number three. I'm sorry. Three is sexual nature. Every man should understand sexual nature. Spiritually and physically. And I'm talking about healthy, correct sexual nature. What we got going on now, and, I'm, and I hate to say this, but what we got going now is... Let me just give you an example with my life, right? So, um, I never had a man there... And when I got 16, I didn't have a man there to pull me to the side and say, okay, man, this is what this is. 
like this is what women is, this is what women do, this is sexual, this is uh, I never had that. I had to I had to figure that on my own. And early in my childhood, and, or late in my childhood, but early in my manhood, a lot of my sexual understanding was from my homeboys and we trying to outdo each other, especially in my late childhood when I was six, in my teenage years. Go get her number, dog. You trying to outdo one that hey, I got more numbers than you, but I get more women than you. I get it. I I didn't know what a lot of that stuff mean. You figuring it out, right? Like 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 this is crazy, but this happened in our culture. We leave our kids alone in the most important thing there is, and that's sexual. Sexuality is the most important thing that 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 we have in life behind God and all that. But I'm talking about, but, but for that transition between boyhood and manhood, sexuality is the most important thing there is. The most important, you can make a baby from this, right? A, a, a baby can be made from this. That's wild to me. The, t- the twins are 15, I'm 15 years old. I've been having this talk with them since I was 11. I've been helping them find sexual healthiness, sexual understanding, sexual healthiness in, 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 for a long time now. Four years now. And of course I preach and I, and I preach um, um, abstinence and celibacy. Um, I don't know what it is when you be a virgin. I don't know what that's called. Virgin, virginality? Virgin, virginity? I don't know. Anyways. These are some of the most important things that a man has to learn. Women, if you're raising men and you're single, and you're a single parent and you're raising men, please, 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 Look to your friends that are married and talk to their husbands and see if their husbands can talk to your kids. It's the most uncomfortable thing for like maybe the first two talks. They're not gonna wanna hear it. They're not, and, and to be honest with you, it's all about how you package it. Like, I'll take a, a, a conversation and build it into that conversation where he's already the way where they're already comfortable and I'll build it in. They're yo, even with us, we have to take responsibility and accountability into their sex lives, especially at the early ages of it. In the black community and and and, and all communities, but I can only speak for the black community because I'm a part of the black community. I'm raising, I'm, I'm, I'm black man raising black kids and, and, and living in, in, in around mostly black people. So what I see is we have a lot of unhealthiness in, 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 in our sexual, uh, in our sexual, in our sexuality in the men, in, in men, and in our community because they're not taught it. They're not taught it. I even got on here, if you, if women, if you don't understand how to teach a man sexuality, I got, I got content on here. I have a lot of content on here that's gonna help you um, talk to your kid about sexuality. So you gotta teach your kid to be accountable, take responsibility, and then give him sexual understanding, right? Sexual understanding. That's hugely important. Hugely important. Number four, don't ever neglect, don't ever neglect teaching your son how to be a good man. The the, the ability to be a good, kind, strong man. Good, kind, strong man. Don't, Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget that. See, we teach our men to be strong, but we don't teach them to be kind. And then we teach our men to be kind and we don't teach them to be strong and they gotta go together. They gotta go together. If you say, okay, well, I wanna teach my son to be a warrior, that's fine. But every day is not a day that we're gonna be warring. 
You teach him to be kind, kind. When it's time for him to enter warrior mode, he can enter warrior mode. But when he's out of warrior mode, he needs to be a kind, caring, helpful, um, mannerable, uh, respectful young man. We gotta teach that. And number five, this is the most, I ain't gonna, it's not the most important, but this is important. We gotta teach him to respect elders. We gotta teach him to seek and respect and understand that elders are important. Don't ever, 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 ever make your little sons forget about wise counseling. Don't ever let him understand that uh, I think that elders are elders are so important, and we need to get back to that in our communities, and we need our elders to get back to being elders. But let's just hold another conversation. But now we got these men out here that don't want to listen to nobody, that don't want to hear nobody, that don't want to hear the elders. That, one, that don't want to listen to the elders, you can't tell them nothing. They're not seeking wise counseling. And the Bible says, in, 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 in Proverbs, a man that don't seek wise counseling, he's going to be out there doing some of the most ungodly stuff. I'm paraphrasing it. Understand. I probably should have had it ready for you to read, but I don't got time. I, I could probably go there, but I don't have time. But we got to get them back to listening to the elders, respecting the elders. The elders are important. In our community, I think overall, we need to get back to our elders. We need to get back to, to hearing and, and, and understanding our elders. So these are the five things we need to teach our men. Five things we need to teach our men about being a man or how to be a man and be back in order. Because when he's accountable, when he's responsible, accountable saying okay I, I I I understand my wrong and I'm gonna fix it responsible is understanding that okay I I, I got I, I gotta take care of my responsibility whether it's be a wife I gotta take care of her whether it be a kid the kids I got bills all these things this is what men do this is what responsibility look like all right we need to have this a, a, a proper mind number three is a proper mind in sexuality now, four and five, you can switch them easy type of way, but they need to be taught. Teach the man how to be nice, how to be, be reverent, how to be respectful, how to be loving. How to be loving, nice, loving, all of this stuff. And then understanding the, the you know, respecting our elders. I think if we got back to that as men in Christianity, as we got back to as men in the black culture, I think you'll see overnight, if men do that, you'll see overnight the community will change. You will see overnight the community change. You, you notice how I never say anything about treating women. Because all of that, how to treat a woman comes into all of that. It comes into all of that. I just fix men. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really have to. But I do believe that if we follow these things, that it, it, men can be better. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. You know, I think we're going to get this little... We might get all of this in in an hour. I ain't think we could. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't think we could. I ain't think we could. And, and we still got time, so I better get on. I better get on, better get on. All right, first, now I wanna talk to women. Um, fellas, you can hear, you can listen, but I ain't talking to you. You probably can learn from this. What I don't want you to do, fellas, is I don't want you to take what I'm saying to the women and think that you can use that in talking points to women. That's not what this is for. That's not what this is for. As a, as, as a man, you're not accountable to correct women. As a man, you're not accountable to do anything but show leadership to women, correct thyself, and thy household, of course. But women, and the only reason why I feel I can say what I'm saying to women is because of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm being used, I'm a used vessel. I talk to people to better their lives. I do not use this to put them down, denigrate them, hurt them, or anything. My words is never to hurt. And that's the difference in me doing this under the Spirit of God is I understand. At, at times, I gotta make my words soft like candy. But at all times, I'm not trying to hurt nobody. 
even if what I say comes out, I mean, I'm sorry, even what I say comes to you as hurtful, sit with it a little bit. You'll see that it's going to make you stronger. So I just want to get that disclaimer for men that I don't want you to, and women, what I said earlier to men, that wasn't for you, that wasn't for you to use. The same thing I'm saying to women, I mean, to men, I'm saying it to you just in reverse. You don't have, you don't correct no man but your household. If you correct your sons, then no one else or no other woman will have to correct your son. So if women correct their sons, no other women, so there's, there's no need for, need for corrections from other women. Vice versa for men. If you correct your daughters, there will be no need from other men to correct your daughters. So that's the disclaimer. That's the disclaimer. So let's get into this right here. So women, I got five things that you can do to put yourself back in order, right? Being faithful to God and, and have a relationship with God, that, 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 that's a given. We, we don't have to put that in there. That's a given. All right, so let's get into it. Number one, I think the most important thing that a woman can do is understand femininity and understand your power in femininity. Um, what happened today is through teachings, through feminine teaching, they have taught you, and you, you don't know this, but they have taught you that being feminine is weak and there's no power in that. There's a difference between meek and weak. There's between, a difference between weak and order. See, I'm going to speak to you through the holy, through the word of God, through the holy word of God, and then I'm going to speak to you from a, a point of view that is loving, right? So as a man, as a man of God, speaking in, in, in my understanding of God, it is man over woman, not in power, but in order. What that means is because he's over you doesn't mean that he tells you everything what to do. No, you, you, you don't. What, what happens when you become with a man, and this is what people, I gotta say this, because this is what people mix, get mixed up. They think order means power. No, order means decisions over. Right? So me as a man, I'm gonna take the accountability for whatever happened to our family. So my last say is going to be what's said because when something mess up in the house, it's never going to be blamed on my wife. It's never going to be blamed on my wife. If my son goes out and go to jail, I messed up. Not my wife, I messed up. That's it. Now femininity is, and masculinity is, okay, I am stronger with you. See, see, there's no one stronger than the, and neither one is stronger than the other, right? It's like the yin and yang. I hate using that term, that, but it's, it's kind of like the yin and yang, right? I'm out there being, being hard and, and tough and everything. You back home being weak and, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You back home being feminine and meek. And when I'm too tough, you're going to draw me and say, okay, you, you too far out there. And when you're too feminine, I'm going to say, okay, I need you to be a little stronger here. I mean, I'm sorry, you're going to need a little harder here and all that when you're being too... I, I, see, we get caught up in these words, man. I, I, and I'm not trying to the, 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 the skirt around these words. But strength is, 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 is something that happens together. It's not something that happens individually. There's no strong men and there's no strong women individually. You, you're weak. You're both weak. You both do it. And we seeing that in the black culture. You see, I don't know if y'all seeing that in the black community. Now you may not even be from the black community, but look at the black community and see our men, we think we we, we strong, we just masculinely out of order. Just masculinely out of order. Masculinity is amazing, it's beautiful. So is femininity. And when they come together, that's when it's strong. So understand this, being in your feminine, Man, listen, when you and your feminine, you can control men. Woo! Go look through the Bible. 
The most feminine men, men, the most feminine women was used to conquer the most strongest men. Y'all better know something, women. Y'all better know something. Number one, femininity. Number two, understand this. You have to protect your trust. You have to protect your trust. Because when your trust is broken, what happened with a lot of women? When your trust is broken, it turns you hard. It turns you, turns you, not just towards women, but towards life. It turns you hard. It turns you callous. And that's with men too, but men, I, 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 no, we're not, we're not doing that. But, 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 but with women, trust protected, protected. Protect it. And protect those who are trying to protect it. Your father may be trying to protect it. That trust is is, 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 is probably the most important thing you got. Like the for 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 for, for, uh, for the ability to trust uh, 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 anyone. For and, and I hate to say this, but in the community that in, in the world that we're building up. Women, you have to be more trustful than men a lot of times because of the way the, the patriarchy system. And, I, and I'm not finna argue over what's a good patriarchy nature. I mean, this ain't that. But in the patriarchy system, you gotta, you gotta trust, but you also gotta protect that. Understand, you can't just give it out to everyone. You can't just give it out to everywhere. Right? You gotta protect that trust. Now, now number three is the mentality. I don't, I don't know how else to say this, but what you're built up by, your mindset, what's your mindset? You got to understand your mindset as a woman is the most strongest thing in, in, in any community because you are the first teacher of our kids. You're the first teacher. So your kids are getting your mindset. The mate that you pick, he should align with your mindset. See, see, in our culture, we, you, we, we, we especially our women, we don't understand how to Maybe pick a man as strong as our good as we're supposed to. But the mindset is it. And the media plays on your mindset. It tries to, 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 to tell you what to believe, what to listen to, what to hear, what to believe in. All no. You got to protect that. See, when you walk in with Jesus, you literally come upon his mindset. You gotta protect that. And and, 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 and I hate to say it, but sometimes in church they can they can even go out to your mindset. One of the biggest things they, that women they came out to you in your mindset is the this whole love, me love, me love. You gotta love you, girl. Your self-love is important the first love. That's the most important love, girl. Self-love. You got that. And that makes the most selfish people. And women, you gotta put you gotta keep yourself from that. You gotta be other focused. You gotta protect that mindset. You have to protect that mindset. Number four is your body, your body. Whether it be sexually, whether it be physically with what you eat, with, 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 with. you got to know what's put in your body. Your body is what kids come through. Your body is how, how, how we bring forth kids. We have to protect that. God knows you got to protect that. You gotta be responsible for that. Spiritually, man, you can't just let any man into your body. It should be one man into your body. You don't need all the practice with different men to become good sexually, as, as the world would tell you. You don't need all that 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 that, that lust and all that stuff that, that comes with the body. You don't need all that the world tells you that you need. I'm telling you, you don't. I'm telling you, you don't. You can, you can find one man and, and, and sexually y'all gonna mold each other. Y'all gonna mold each other. 
But then also think about this, man. Your body is what brings forth life. Do you know how powerful that is? The world, the world want to say you can be sexual liberating, sexual this with your body, sexual that with your body. Right? You can be sexual free with your body. What does God say? See, understand this. Your body is more important. I'm trying to show you that your body is more important because you are a bearer of something that is, is to be protected and that's life. It matters. Life matters coming from your body. But because you think your body is just ordinary, you think your body is not amazing, you think your body is not worth it, you can say, well, when it comes down to life, I can get rid of it because it means nothing. Or because you have a, a outside view of your body than what you're supposed to have. You think your body is it, 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 it just for sexual and this and that, this and that. You say, I don't want to mess up my body. I, I don't want to mess up my body by bringing forth life and that's what it was made for. I'm not going to get too deep into that. But understand the power and the importance of your body. The importance of making sure the body is healthy. To make sure that body is, 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 is ready for the one of the most important thing it was created for. That's bringing life. That's bringing life. So, so understand this, man. Um, and this is gonna, this message is gonna go easier on a, a lot of people who are already, you know, um, are in the world of Christianity. But for some that's not in the world of Christianity, or some that's in the world of Christianity, and you're brand new to it, I really hope you, these these five things help you, right? I really hope these five things help you. Now, I just told you four. We're finna get into five. But before we get into five, I really want to make sure you guys understand that 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 other people need to hear this message. I'm not I'm not asking for anything other than to you to share it, like, and share this because it helps the channel grow. I'm, I'm more interested in, 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 in putting out the message for God. Uh, that, that's what I'm more interested in doing. So if you can, give a like and share. Right? A like and share. All right, now, the putting women back in order, the last thing you got to understand is this, right? So we talked about uh, um, uh, um, the first four things. The last thing you got to understand this is you got to, you have to, women. I'm telling you, you have to have to. You got to start seeking wise counsel. You got to start seeking wise counsel. This is where you and the men are going to be the same. Our elders should be where our wise counsel come from. But in y'all case, women, it's not just elders. It also, you got to be aware of Seeking counsel from hurt people, hurt women. Now, we're living in a world where there's a lot of hurt women. I understand. I understand. I'm not trying to take anything away from women and the plight they go through. I totally understand. But when you're hurt, going to get advice from hurt women is not the best of things. They're going to get advice from hurt people. But what I noticed that in a lot of women take advice from other women. You know, and I'm not talking against the sisterhood. I understand you guys need that sisterhood. I would never talk against the sisterhood from you saying, okay, not to be a part of the sisterhood. I will say now when the sisterhood is toxic, when the sisterhood is not giving wise counsel, you get, you get away from that sisterhood. But I understand there's strength in the sisterhood. But toxic messages, I, I see it all the time. Women be in relationships on social media, I see it all the time. Women be in relationships, and then they get out of relationships. And they get out of relationships, they be hurt. I see it all the time. And then you go to a bunch of hurt women. You surround yourself around other hurt women because you think because they've been through what I've been through, I should surround myself around them. And that understanding is understandable. But that understanding is not good if you're going to put yourself around hurt women that has not healed. You want to put yourself around women that has been hurt and has healed. 
Hurt women will only hurt women, but heal women will only heal women. And that goes with anything, but especially this case. You know, you 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 been in a relationship and out of relationship with her with, with these men that hurt you and everything, and, and and I understand, but go find women that's been healed. Be understanding of 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 of, of that. Be really understanding of that. Now, I really want to um, thank you guys. I really hope that you guys listen. Um, women, you listen to the thing that, that, that I said towards for you for women. Those, those five things are super important. Men, the five things I told you to focus on are super important for us to, to get ourselves back in order. Now, there's obviously more things that we, we, we would need to do to get us in order. But those five things are, are, are what I feel when I, when I go to the Word of God, when I see what's going on in the culture, those things are what I feel that we need to do to be more in, to be in order. Those are the things that, 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 that I know if we do these things, we'll be more in order. Um, the beat has cut off, so that means it's, it's time to wrap it up. <laughs> That's how I use things to wrap it up. Um, but this show has been amazing. I have a lot of other videos on this channel when it comes down to, especially for men, um, when it comes down to you being better men. It's a lot of stuff on this channel for that. Uh, if you really want to um, um, grow as a man of God um, and, 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 and understand this, sometimes, man, I don't have to speak to you as, um, I'm not speaking to your, your, your sexual, I'm speaking to your man. Because we are, we exist so much more out of sexuality, right? See, men, a lot of times we get caught up in this world, this very sexualized world, and we think that you know everything should be spoken to us about women and relationships and all. You know, we got all these sexual goal rules and how to talk to women and how to wear this and how to up this. I ain't talking to that dude. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to the you that that exists on this world. Outside of the whole sexuality, where you exist as trying to be a good father, where you exist trying to be a good man, where you're trying to be a good brother, where you're trying to be a good um, son, where you're trying to be a good, good um, um, whatever, uncle, all these things. This is who I'm talking to. Now, we got stuff for, for sexuality. Women, I, I, I do my best, but I, I don't speak a lot to women. I don't speak a lot to women, but a lot of times, women, you can hear me. When I'm speaking about God, and you can learn so much about that from to your womanhood, to your womanhood, because our sexuality, we should want, we should pretty much want the same thing, men and women. Like to be real honest with you, we should want to be a a, a good person, a, 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 a worshiper of God, right? A good worshiper God. We should want to um to be family oriented. We should want to improve the world. So a lot of things I, I should be able to, I speak to you should be able to understand. Um, and then seek out good, please seek out good wisdom and good counsel. In, in our culture, especially in the church culture, especially in the black culture, we need to get back to our, 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 um, our elders. And I think I'm going to do a video on elders too because the elders are doing a lot of stuff that shouldn't be done. In, in, in elderhood, man, I was on YouTube the other day and I seen 65 year old women dressing like they're 25. I'm like, where is the difference? You should supposed to be able to teach them. Now you're trying to be just as sexy as them. Like what 65 year old person should be trying to be sexy? What 55, 60 year old person should be trying to be sexy? Is that what we have? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't rant, don't rant, don't rant, don't rant, don't rant, don't rant. Don't rant. Old dudes in the clubs trying to find some young. Come on, bruh. We better than that. Anyways, so <laughs> I thank you guys for coming by. I thank you for um, listening. Always remember, I love you. God love you. God bless.